Hello, everyone. This is Pamela Prevetta, Pageant Live. Uh, I want to uh, welcome everyone. Happy holidays. It's been a while since I've been doing any any type of interviews, but you know what? I happen to have uh, today, I have Miss M Montana Teen USA, Katie Took. Katie is going to be in our interactive uh, Pageant Live magazine that's coming out, and this will be embedded. This interview will be embedded in the magazine so you can click it and watch it. Welcome Katie, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm just fine. Everyone, she's the newly crowned Miss Montana Teen USA 2021, who will be competing next year for Miss uh, USA, Teen USA. So that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Definitely. It's, um, I still feel it's getting to start to feel real, but it's still very shocking to wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I'm not in a dream. This is real. So it's definitely really cool. So you had said to me before that you put your town on the map with this crown. So that that's, that's pretty impressive. Tell us about that. Well, in my rural community, it's basically a farm and it strives on farm and ranch. And so there's not a lot of pageant girls. And to give you a close estimate on how small my town is, there's 12 um, people in my class. So in my whole grade, actually. So it's very small. And so to be able to put my town on a map and to really show this that this organization can bring several opportunities to rural communities or big communities is really cool to see and so it does feel very honoring to be able to be the first Miss um, Montana Teen USA from Ekalaka. There was more teens that you competed against correct? How many girls were yeah. in it against? I believe 16. Um, yeah there was 16 of us. Uh, all of us grew very close and so it was a lot of fun regardless of whoever would win we were all very happy for each other and so that was a very cool Thing to experience that we were all so happy for each and every one of them, each and every person, if they would win. So tell me about that. Tell me what drove you to go into a Miss Montana Teen USA. Um, so being a competitor myself, something uh, being in involved in basketball, in volleyball, and other extracurricular activities that involve competition, uh, I feel like that it drove, um, being in quarantine as well as being sick really helped push me to reach my goals and to be able to uh, really go for what's on my bucket list and cross off whatever I've left uncrossed in my life. And so being uh, Miss Montana Teen was on my bucket list for several years. And so being able to be have a competitive gene really helped stress that and make me go for my goal. So after we have a package after winning, and that includes, I believe, four coaches as well as two or three personal trainers that um, really make sure that you're prepared and you're ready. Uh, four of them, I know all my coaches are very well trained in interview, and two of them are very well trained in makeup as well as runway, and the other are very strong in interview as well. And so it's very um, nice, and it feels um, very, um, just, I feel so honored and blessed to be able to work with those um, people that are ultimately trying to get me to my final goal as Miss Teen USA. So I try to meet with um, at least one or two of them weekly, as well as getting on a workout routine because I'm not in basketball because I do want to get out as much of this title. I did have to cut the extracurricular basketball this year. So it's nice to have routines that have been made um, by our personal trainers as well. So Giselle Boone is my actual, was actually my coach before I was Miss Montana Teen. We started working with each other one month before the competition and we talked, uh, we trained every other day. And so that's the main person that I've been focused on runway. And then we also have Jorge Esteban, um, a Queen's Conversation, um, Carrie Damiano, I hope I'm pronouncing their names correctly, but so those are all of our coaches, but Giselle Boone is one that I've been um, working with frequently on my runway because something to train for Miss USA is you have to, I watched my video and I saw my flaws. So I'm really going to focus on the things that I did um, badly or did, did poorly compared to the other events. And so 
runway was one of those that I really needed to train on. So that's partly why I've been working with her more. So my final goal is to really go into the administration part of it and possibly get the state of administration uh, title and be able to work in the government or even the nation because you know the sky is your limit so you might as well reach for the moon and fall on the stars. That's my favorite quote by the way. And so um, I really want to get my PhD in psychology because there's a lot of education um, and PH psychology things that um, that really help education wise. So to be able to understand why distance learning might be causing negative toll on emotions and our students, I really want to understand that as an educator. And so I really want to educate myself on the, the um, human mind as well as the education side of it. And um, so by the end of my career, I really want to be able to be hands-on and be able to make curriculums that focus on the seven types of learning because there's so many different ways that students can learn and I feel as though sometimes only two or three are ed educated or used in our education for students. So although I'm not an expert, I know a couple, I know a couple, so literary, auditory, and um, I, I'm blanking on the other one, but I know I'm literary and my brother is auditory. And so when we were younger, you have always been, um, you, you know from a parent that there's always that teacher, there's a teacher that always assigns a book or a reading passage that you have to read to your parent. And so when my mom was gift put that with, the, with that challenge, she said, you read to your brother and your brother will follow along. We never understood why, but we, were, we weren't about to argue. And as I would read, he would comprehend better listening and I would comprehend better reading. And her being an educator, she was able to spot that from kindergarten. And I don't know how to this day, I still, I'm shocked. But as soon as we stopped with that strategy, both Royce and I realized, now we know. And so we do that since we're in the same class and we read the same novels. I still do that to this day. So I pull Royce and I'm like, hey, can I, can I read to you? And he always says yes. And so that's... Um, another way of learning that sometimes is missed in education. You either read out loud or you read by yourself. There's never an in-between of who wants to read out loud and who wants to read by themselves. So that's my goal. Yes, um, so I am not on a, my, we do not have a farm or ranch, but I do remember we had one before I moved to Ikalaka, but being involved in a rural community, um, our roads, for example, just a random fact, are not paved, and so it's that rural, and so we are basically a farming and a ranching community. So when you drive down, you're going to see herds and herds of cows, or cattle as we call it, and so it's um, a lot of fun to be able to educate people, and that's why I use the extracurricular platform, FFA. I am normally involved in pub the public speaking part of it, but there's also agronomy, which um, it helps educate young people how to farm or how to ranch. And so that's why I really like that organization because it really advocates and educates people on giving back because Montana is a very farm and ranch community, at least the Eastern part. And so teaching the younger generation is very as, as important as you know participating in it. I myself raised, um, a, well, used to raise a steer and, a, and, a, and swine. I will pick that up as soon as I am retired from this position, but uh, it's just so nice to be able to, you know, really develop that, um, not connection, but to really know that you're putting honest work into your beef, into your uh, farming. And so that's something that has been very important in my livelihood. And so that's something that's about, that's what FFA is about. And I hope that I will be able to also educate people on that, considering that is where I'm from. When I was younger, my mom, once again, was always, always stressed us on learning and appreciating music. We weren't actually able to listen to our first normal or, you know, pop culture music until we uh, appreciated classical music. So when we were younger, Royce and I, I do have an older sister, but she was in school at the time. She would always put on um, Beethoven and w Beethoven was something that sticks out or Mozart. And she played that until we, we started, you know, really getting the niche for it. 
and then she allowed us to listen to other music. So ever since I was younger, I always had that background of knowing I wanted to be involved in music. And in second grade, she actually enrolled me in piano lessons, and I've been playing ever since. And then in sixth grade, I soon developed the love and joy of be playing my flute. And then my music addiction um, spiraled off and I bought myself a trumpet and a ukulele. And so I'm a one man band when it comes to that. So uh, and anytime I'm free or anytime I find myself in a sad mood, I always just reach for my flute or reach for my trumpet and I'm working on developing ukulele skills. And so that's something that I've always been passionate about through in my life. So my social media is at Miss, um, yeah, at Miss MT Teen USA. So it's Miss MT Teen USA for Instagram and as well as Facebook. If you just look up Miss Montana Teen USA on Facebook, it should pop up. And then my personal is Katie Took 3 and same for Facebook. Just look um, me up at Katie Took, and you should be able to follow me. I have Instagram and Facebook if uh, that helps. And so I really hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this as well as I did. <laughs> That's so. wonderful though. So before you go, we always have a lightning round, okay? And I'm gonna ask you five questions. I want you to answer them very quickly so we can get to know you a little bit better. What's your favorite food? Okay. What's your favorite Steak. food? Steak. <laughs> Steak. I guess so with all that then. <laughs> um, who's your favorite uh, musician? Beethoven. Um, if you, uh, black or orange? Black. Um, who is your favorite actor? Oh, um, oh my gosh. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> uh, is that because he's handsome? <laughs> yes. I, I exposed myself there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you could make one wish, what would that be? Oh my gosh, you put me on the spot. Um, one wish that has always been um, basic, it's going to be educational based, but I really want to be able to touch every single uh, student in, in the nation, which I know will is a big goal in a wish, but I just want to make sure that every single student knows how to be, what, what their education system is and like their learning niche is because it's very, it's passionate on me considering I had to learn mine at a very young age. I have to ask you before you go, though, I want to hear your bucket list. You have a long life to live. So I'm, what is your bucket list? Give me at least uh, five. Okay. Right. So a couple things is my room is Paris themed. So I've always wanted to see Paris as well as Australia because Australia is where track people go. And I'm a big track person. So there's always that organization based on track. And so I really want to go there as well as the kangaroos, you know, we can't forget about those. And then I want to become a Dallas or a Denver uh, cheerleader. And I understand I'm nowhere near doing the splits, but never did I ever think I'd be Miss Montana Teen USA. So the sky's the limit on anyone's opportunities. So that's something I really want to do, as well as learning the trombone, because I'm not quite done with my <laughs> music. And then, ooh, what, Give I'm sorry. Give me one think more. But those are the four that I can name on off the top of my head. That's and, good. Oh, and I guess I do want to come out with my education book because I make out education. I make up educational rhymes to help children calm down. Being, you know, working with children, it really helps to have cheers, songs, or rhymes to get their attention. So I really want to consolidate all my rhymes into a book. So I'm working on that right now. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Listen, you are absolutely amazing. Happy holidays. Thank you for, you know, take, uh, thank you for me allowing me into your world. We will be watching you, young lady. So we can't wait to see you on that big uh, Miss Teen USA stage in 2021. Yeah, that's so exciting. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so happy I got to meet you over Zoom. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.